after testing a bunch of Wi-Fi 7 mesh systems, these are the ones that impressed me the most. So there were a few on one that I put inside this list, but I was like, Ugh, it's such, it's so hard to get on this list. I was like, no, I got to stop myself. So I put these seven on the list, not to say that those are bad or anything like that, but these are just the ones that were the most impressive. So in this video, I'm gonna compare them to each other. We're gonna go over the speed test, range test. I have all those numbers right here. I have tested with the following Wi-Fi 7 devices. And I, if you also happen to have other Wi-Fi 7 devices like the iPhone 16 Pro Max or the Pixel 10 Pro XL, these can't go quite as fast as these two. That's why I like to test with these devices. And I've done a separate video on those uh, recently, actually. So I'll link that down below. I'll also link the product links below. And I've also done individual reviews on each one of these. So I'll link those down below. But I have retested some of these just because it's been a while. I had tested with other devices. I'm like, let me just play out, the, even out the playing field, update the firmwares and everything like that, retest. So we're golden. Now... In terms of mesh systems, I wanted to mention that sometimes when I go to relative's house or friend's house, I I kind of have this habit of testing their Wi-Fi speeds. And then I always ask them like, you know, what speeds are you paying for? And there's usually a pretty big difference between what they're paying for and what they're getting. And so I kind of talked to them about mesh systems. I'm like, you know, you could really improve your speeds. And it's like, oh yeah, sometimes it lags here. This camera takes too long to load or once in a while Netflix is lagging. I'm like, you know, and basically long story short, after I kind of helped them with the mesh system, they're really genuinely very, imp like really I could have gone these speeds this whole time. I'm like, yeah, like I, you know, I didn't know at one point either. And when I learned about it, I was genuinely like, wow. And that's kind of basically what I'm trying to say is mesh systems, Wi-Fi, these mesh systems, are your friend when it comes to increasing Wi-Fi coverage and increasing Wi-Fi speeds. And a common question I get asked is, um, at least with my relatives and friends, it's okay if you're walking throughout your house and let's say we got the Asus Speed D10, it auto, if I'm walking near this room, it'll switch me here. And then if I'm walking to the other room, it'll switch me here. And I don't need to connect to a different SSID, a different Wi-Fi name or anything like that. And assuming your internet speeds are fast enough, there's really going to be no lag when you're switching. In fact, you're probably not going to even notice that you switched over to the other one. And that's what makes just, it just makes it seamless. Starting off with ASUS PD4, both of these units are identical. They're both routers. However, the one that's hooked up to your ONT or your modem is actually the one that's acting as the router. The other one is acting as an access point or a node or a satellite or an extender, whatever you want to call it. So. For the most of the mesh systems, I will just show one unit. However, the Orbeez, there is a physical router and a physical satellite. So I'll show you guys both of those. So basically, this is Asus's new signature look. They have vents all around on the bottom. We have the factory reset right here. We have the WPS button right here. And then as far as ports, we have two 2.5 gigabit ports. We have the power and we have the power on and off switch. Moving on to the Deco B63, we have a Wi-Fi 7 sign right here. We have some vents all around this on the side, very minimal, but it's pretty much there. We have the WPS button. We have four 2.5 gigabit ports, which is great. We have a USB 3.0, so if you want to share your external hard drive, you can. Don't expect crazy fast speeds out of it, but it could be done. We have the power port, and on the bottom, we have a factory reset right here. We have some vents on the bottom as well. Moving on to the Eero Max 7, we have a glossy white in the front, we have a matte white in the back, we have vents on the top, vents on the back, and vents on the bottom. We have a reset button right here, we have two 5 gigabit ports, and we have a USB-C. Eero does recommend using the USB-C power supply that it comes with. And yes, this does look like, like a miniature version of the Eero Max 7, which is also a more powerful version of this. Moving on to the Asus BT10, which is basically a larger version of the Asus BD4, vents all around, just like the BD4. Vents in the back, vents on the bottom. We have the WPS button. We have the factory reset button right here. And we have a USB 3.0 port. So again, if you want to share your hard drive, you can. Don't expect crazy fast speeds though. However, we have a gigabit port. We have two 10 gigabit ports, which is a nice upgrade. We have the power and we have the power on and off. Now we move on to the Orbi 870 and this is the dedicated router. So we have the sync button, factory reset, we have four 2.5 gigabit ports, and we have the internet port, which is a 10 gigabit port. We have the LED right there, and we have the power, and yes, this can actually be wall-mounted if you get the optional accessory. So, and 
it's in terms of size and shape it's pretty much identical to the satellite except the satellite is not a router and can't be used as a router it's literally used to increase your wi-fi coverage as for 2.5 gigabit ports and everything else is pretty much the same other than the fact that again it doesn't have the internet port because it's a satellite. Then we get to the Deco BE95, which is a larger version of the BE63. We have a WPS, we have two 2.5 gigabit ports, we have two 10 gigabit ports. We also have an optional 10 gigabit SFP plus port. However, if you're using the SFP plus port, you can use the RG45, which is the ethernet port, or if you're using the ethernet port, you also can't use the SFP plus port. So one or the other. We have a USB 3.0. Again, you could share your hard drive if you wanted to. Again, no fast speeds. We have a power port right there. And on the bottom, we have the factory reset pin right there. And we have some holes and some holes on the top as well. And finally, we got the Nekia Orbi 970, very similar to the 870 where we have a router and a satellite. We have vents on the top, vents all around on the sides. And this one can also be wall mounted just like the 870 can. And we have the sink, reset, 2.5 gigabit ports right here, four of them. And we have two 10 gigabit ports, one of them is which is for the internet. We have the power port right here. And again, identical size and shape for the satellite. However, the ports are less for the satellites. We have the sink, reset, two, two 2.5 gigabit ports, and we have a 10 gigabit port, which is fantastic because there is no drop in speeds right there. And we have the power port right here, and this one can also be wall mounted. Starting off with the internet speed test. Now, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, unless of course, the router itself can't go that fast. So in my case, my internet speeds happen to be five gigs up and down, and some of these can't go quite as fast as that. And that's why you see some of these limitations. So with Asus BD4, hovering around the gigabit speeds, you know, a little bit faster for the download, but around gigabit for the upload. And then we once we go up to the BE63, it definitely goes faster, but again, it's being capped to just under the 2.5 gigabit speeds, and it's really the port that's limiting those speeds. The Pro 7 is now kind of, it allows up to five gigs. However, the Wi-Fi itself can't go that fast, and the upload wasn't, even though it was very fast, but not quite as fast as the B63, and that's why I like to test these things just to see their speed differences. BT10 was very impressive overall, especially for the download speeds, and again, the upload speeds right around the Pro 7. Not quite as fast, but still doing pretty well. And then the Orbi 870, the BE95, and then the Orbi 970 were just very, very good, especially their download speeds. Um, but the B95 took the cake for the download speeds and the Orbi 970 took the cake for the upload speeds. Now to find the true performance of these mesh systems, I need to do a local speed test. So what I do is I make my computer into server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to the computer. And in the case of wired and wireless backhaul, I go from my Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which then jumps to the primary one, which then goes to the server. And this is a better test because it I'm no longer relying on my ISP, my internet service provider, nor the public speed test server, which can really vary quite a bit at times. So looking at the speed test right here, we could see they've pretty much all improved across the board. BD4, especially in the upload section, really kind of flew up quite a bit. And then B63, very, very good. Granted, the B63 was already pretty good with the internet speed, so not quite a bump there. And really, it's the port limitation with the B63. The Eero Pro 7, a huge bump, especially in the upload sections. The same was true for the Asus BT10. And kind of across the board, we got much faster speeds. And really, the Deco B95 and the Orbi 970 were kind of taking the cake for the download and upload section. So very, very fast overall. Now, you'll notice that with the Orbi 870, it actually kind of slowed down. And the reason for that is it only has one fast 10 gig port. So the other ports, when it goes out, it's actually being capped to 2.5 gigabit speeds. If it wasn't, it actually would get much faster speeds based on its speed rating because it's actually a very, very fast mesh system. But up, up to 2.5 gigs is when it's actually going when I'm actually doing the local speed test. Again, because because it only has one fast 10 gig port. Next, we move on to wired backhaul and pretty much across the board, we got very similar speeds as to the single router configurations because all the rest of them actually have the same 
their fastest port, there's actually two of their fastest ports available. Whereas with the RB870, that's why you're actually seeing the, the speeds being capped to 2.5 gigabits. Next, we get to wireless backhaul. And this is where you could see a big difference between the less expensive routers to the more expensive routers. Granted, most of the routers actually did really, really well with the Deco BE95 taking the absolute cake, no contest, it's just next level wireless backhaul speeds. The wireless backhaul speeds on the Deco B95 were pretty much almost as fast as the Ethernet speeds, which is really saying something because the Ethernet speeds on the B95 were very, very fast. Granted, I do have to give a thumbs up to the Orbi 870 because up to 2.5 gigabit speeds was phenomenal. Obviously the Orbi 970 did a little bit better than the 870, but the 870 does you know, also cost less than the 970 um, in terms of the neck gears. Next we move on to range test. Now range will vary drastically by location. Essentially the more obstructions you have, typically the less range you're gonna get. Obviously these are all tested in the same exact environment. So there are, it's an apples to apples comparison, but if you're in between floors, thick floors, uh, thick floors, <laughs> thick walls, concrete walls, stuff like that, all of that stuff can typically hurt your range. I happen to be more of an open area, so I typically get more range now than I used to in the past. And all of them, I have capped my testing to 100 feet. In the past, I actually used to go as far as I can go possibly, but now I started capping my speeds to 100 feet. So some of these, in fact, all of these in my case can actually exceed 100 feet. Now looking at the results, we could see that they are all pretty much kind of dropping, some dropping more than the others, and really kind of depends on what speeds they're starting at. Obviously, when they start at much faster speeds, they usually tend to drop more, but all doing pretty well. Then we get to the 50 feet, you know, st some of them are still flying. So the more expensive ones are kind of flying, but one thing you'll start to notice is that the ASUS BT-10 is really, really, really doing well for its price. I mean, considering its price, it's actually doing exceptionally well. And even at 100 feet, the fact that it's actually getting above gigabit speeds for the download, not for the upload, but for the download, is incredibly impressive. But the fastest download speed at 100 feet, uh, in my case, was the Deco B95, and that definitely did, took the cake for the download speeds, but some of the other ones weren't too far behind. So really kind of just looking at the chart, most of these did fairly well. Time to pick our winners, and even though it is a tough decision, all of these are fantastic in their own ways, I'm going to say that the Asus BT-10 happens to be the winner because of price per performance. You're getting insane speeds, wired wireless backhaul, very, very good, range test, very, very good, Overall, you got the two 10 gig ports. Overall, as a package, hard to beat this thing. Now, my personal favorite happens to be the Orbi 970, just because I kind of brought it down to the point that I just like the fact that it has one main SSID that everything just connects to and everything's just fast. So the OnePlus 13 connects to it very fast. Um, laptops, tablets, everything that connects to it just kind of works as fast as the device itself can work. And I just like that about the Orbi 970. It also depends on your specific situation. So I'll just give you guys a quick summary. BD4, very good, up to 2.5 gigabit speeds. But me personally, I would recommend it up to gigabit speeds just because the Wi-Fi is kind of lacking. And I wouldn't get it for wireless backhaul. So I would get this for up to gigabit speeds uh, for up to wired backhaul. But I also like the fact that it has two 2.5 gigabit ports. So if you're running mostly Ethernet connected devices, for the price, it's really, really hard to beat. So if you're running mostly Ethernet up to 2.5, I would get this with some occasional Wi-Fi. But wireless backhaul, not great. Wired backhaul, really good. Uh, Deco B63, fantastic for up to 2.5 gigabit speeds. Wired wireless backhaul, range test, just an overall really, really good package. So um, almost second in line to the BT-10, honestly, just because of what you're getting. And especially, I say that because sometimes it goes on sale and... Man, some of those prices are, wow, just impressive. Euro Pro 7, if you want a very simplified interface, it just kind of works. Again, one main SSID. And by the way, when I say that, they all have guest SSIDs and some of them have an Internet of Things SSID as well. Um, but if you want multiple SSIDs and options and everything like that, again, ASUS is for that. Uh, overall winner, I already mentioned that. Orbi 870. Uh, wireless backhaul on this is insanely good. And again, very simple, just like the Orbi 970. 
Uh, everything just connects to it and it's just really, really fast. And I really love that about the Orbi 870. And again, wireless backhaul on this, phenomenal. Deco B95 is kind of the performance king. And um, Orbi 970, again, one SSID, very, very fast in most cases. Uh, in some cases, not as fast as the Deco, but I don't know, something about this Orbi that I really, really like. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And did you guys enjoy this video? If you guys did, share, subscribe, really appreciate it. Really appreciate all the support. Like the video if you guys don't mind. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.